Every day, the United States and China are marching closer to war. And while images of a destroyed Ukraine are fresh in all our minds, let's be clear. It's highly unlikely the U.S. and China will be involved in this type of military conflict. China and the U.S. are too smart for this type of escalation. Instead, a different type of battle has already begun, and it's being conducted in research laboratories and behind computer screens. Artificial intelligence is changing the world as we know it, but here is something you don't know. AI could give those who master it an economic and military edge in future geopolitical contests. Jake Sullivan, Biden's national security advisor, recently stated, fundamentally, we believe that a select few technologies are set to play an outsized importance over the coming decade, with artificial intelligence near the top of that list. The real battle between the US and China is over AI development, and whoever wins this battle will win the war. In today's video, I'm gonna break down the AI advantages that both the United States and China have and see which country is most likely to come out on top. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of today's video as I'll show you a direct way that you can also get involved and benefit from the AI industry. In 2017, China's government laid out an ambitious plan to be the world leader in AI by 2030. And whenever an industry gets the green light from China's government, you can expect that no expense will be spared and everything will be done to achieve the desired outcome. Previous examples of this include China's high-speed rail network and China's flagship foreign policy project, the Belt and Road Initiative. In just over 12 years, China's developed the world's most advanced and connected high-speed rail network. In addition, in just over 10 years, China has signed over 150 countries up to the BRI, conducting over $6 trillion worth of trade. Because of the Chinese government's support, this has caused many Americans to worry if the US has a chance to actually win this AI war. In 2021, the Pentagon's first chief software engineer, Nicholas Chalin, resigned in protest at the slow pace of technological transformation in the US military. He stated, we have no competing fighting chance against China in 15 to 20 years. Right now, it's already a done deal. It is already over in my opinion. There is a good reason to be angry. One of the main reasons Chalin feels this way is the United States' obsession with the military industrial complex and how our defense budget is being used. The US government increased military spending to $797 billion and is prioritizing projects like building advanced F-35 fighter jets. In Chalin's mind, emerging AI technologies are far more critical to America's future than fighter jets. He added, US cyber defenses in some government departments are at a kindergarten level. But another reason the US is falling behind is the reluctance of major US tech companies like Google to work with the US Defense Department. And this is truly one of the biggest differences between the US and China. In America, major tech companies run independently and are under no obligation to work with the government. Meanwhile, in China, there isn't a single company that is above the party, and major tech companies work hand-in-hand -hand with China's government to achieve the desired outcome for the benefit of the nation. So it goes back to the major announcement in 2017, when China's government decided that investing in AI is the pathway China must follow moving forward. Entire industries and China's largest tech companies all shifted their long-term goals to that of the party and that of the nation. But the US has some key advantages over China in this AI battle. Currently, the US is leading China in building foundation models, which is the machine learning systems and programs like ChatGBT, which has taken the world by storm over the past 12 months. If we look at this graph published by The Economist, we can see that the United States has a clear lead in the number of significant machine learning systems, leading the EU, UK, and China by a significant margin. In addition, one of America's biggest advantages is the English language. 56% of all websites in the world are published in English, compared to only 1.5% in Chinese. In addition, the vast majority of Chinese access the internet through popular social media apps like WeChat, and Weibo, both of which are walled gardens because their content lives within those apps directly and it is not indexed on search engines, thus limiting Chinese AI programs from gathering the data. Industry experts assess the United States has about a two to three year lead on China in terms of machine learning systems. But what happens when we zoom out and we look at this industry 10 to 15 years from now. While China certainly trails the US and AI in 2023, China is pouring all the time and energy into research to not only catch up to the United States, but eventually surpass them. Here are some interesting statistics to put things into perspective. China is now the world leader in AI research. In 2021, China produced 43,000 papers, roughly twice as many as the US. 
In addition to publishing more, China also leads the US in terms of quality. In 2021, Chinese publications were cited in AI research 70% more frequently than their American counterparts. Nine of the world's top 10 institutions by volume of AI publications are Chinese, and the top five labs working on computer vision are all Chinese. But China also has another advantage that is detailed more clearly in this groundbreaking research paper from McKinsey. Published last year, the paper concludes the next frontier for AI in China could add $600 billion to its economy. To give everyone some perspective on just how massive that number is, the GDP of Shanghai, China's most populous city of 28 million people, was roughly $680 billion. So investing in AI can certainly produce robust profits for the future of China's economy. And here is where things get very interesting for China's tech companies. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, each tech company is required to follow the guidelines of the Chinese government. And the government is allowing each of these Chinese tech companies to develop their own vertical of AI tech. Let me give you some examples. Alibaba is the logistics master in China and a leading cloud service provider. They are also one of the leaders of digital payments. So Alibaba will be focusing on developing AI research around these areas of expertise. Baidu brings 20 years of search data in Chinese to the table, as its software has served as China's number one search engine for the past two decades. Baidu launched ErnieBot, which is China's answer to ChatGPT and processes 98% of its data from the Chinese language. Baidu also leads in the transportation sector, so any AI advances in terms of data, search, and transportation will be carried out by Baidu. Huawei is one of China's most important tech companies and has developed the world's most advanced 5G network. Huawei is already working on 6G, but more importantly, Huawei is now focusing on bringing AI to specific niche industries. Huawei is transforming coal mines and shipping ports into modern, sophisticated AI hubs of technology. Huawei just expanded into government, finance, and manufacturing, and will be developing advanced AI models for these industries as well. Finally, ByteDance is one of the world's most important social media companies. With the invention of its signature product, TikTok, it has completely changed social media around the world. ByteDance has a lot of data and video and will focus their AI efforts to advance these specific verticals. So again, this is where we see a fundamental difference between the US and China. While Google is hesitant and can flat out refuse to work with the US government, Chinese tech companies work closely together to achieve China's national AI aspirations. Each Chinese tech company can focus on its own specific vertical that best suits their expertise, and when added together into one ecosystem, it's easy to see that China will be a formidable player in the AI industry for many years to come. But while China's AI dreams certainly have potential, it won't be easy, as the United States will do everything in their power to stop China's rise, a strategy that many insiders predict could ultimately backfire and even destroys America's own microchip industry. It's all part of the United States being scared of a multipolar world, which Harvard University professor Stephen Walt argues in this foreign policy article. He states that the Biden administration is striving for a unipolar world order that no longer exists. It's no secret that the US is banning China's access to the world's most advanced microchips, most of which are used for AI research. The US has pressured its allies, including the Netherlands and Japan, to follow US orders and restrict sales to China. But Victor Gao, the vice president of the Center for China and Globalization, exposes why this is a dangerous thing. If we really talk to the Dutch decision makers, and to some extent, the Japanese decision makers, they do not want to go along with this max pressure from the US, because the only way to nurture and grow their semiconductor businesses in their own countries is to work with their largest customer. That is China. How can anyone in the world truly believe maximize their benefit by killing their largest customer? The US and China battle with AI and microchips will continue in the future. And in doing my research, I found a unique play on the AI industry that I believe has some amazing potential in the future. Everyone, today's video is sponsored by Generative AI Solutions. It trades under the ticker AICOF, and here are three reasons why I believe they have a tremendous opportunity in the future of AI. Reason number one, the company has found a creative business model in the AI space. As you can imagine, building AI systems requires significant capital investment and typically can only be carried out by large tech companies that can invest billions of dollars into high-tech hardware and software needed. But Generative AI Solutions is removing this barrier to entry with their signature product, 
the MAI Cloud. This product allows smaller companies wanting to get into the AI space the opportunity to rent time and use the company's advanced computing and cloud services. Let me give you an example. Last month, Generative AI Solutions announced a $6 million purchase agreement with a Silicon Valley customer. The purchase allows the customer to receive 350,000 hours per year of AI computing services using NVIDIA's H100 graphics processing units for a period of up to seven years. It's a fascinating business model that will help the AI industry grow even faster as smaller tech companies will be able to purchase hours and build advanced AI systems by renting the MAI cloud. Reason number two is Generative AI Solutions is like a venture fund for AI solutions, making strategic acquisitions in promising AI companies. So when you think about it, Generative AI Solutions actually operates very similar to an AI fund or an ETF, because you get exposure to several promising AI businesses all at once. For example, the company recently purchased a 10% stake in Remits.com, which is a leading provider of automated revenue recovery services. This is a really interesting business model as Remits works specifically within the medical industry and uses AI to identify and submit claims that would otherwise go uncollected. This AI software is helping maximize profits for healthcare professionals nationwide. And it's unique AI businesses like this that Generative AI Solutions is investing in. And finally, the third reason is the founder of the company. Ryan Selby is a successful entrepreneur from Vancouver, Canada, who recently sold his business for $100 million and immediately shifted to the AI industry. Mr. Selby is a serial entrepreneur with incredible experience and success and is now leading this new company in one of the most important fields that will dominate the future of our world. But as always, please do your own research before investing in any companies. And to help you with that, I'm going to put the investor presentation, the website, and the stock ticker down in the description below. Everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this deep dive analysis into AI and the battle that the United States and China are currently going on. But now it's time to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Who do you think will win this AI battle in the future? As always, thank you all for your continued support, and I can't wait to see you in our next video soon.